Dave back on the road. Nice. I wonder what Dave's doing. you covered. Hey, is the power off on this? I don't know. Just take it off. Safety violation. Unsafe work conditions. In the construction trades unions, safety is our highest priority, and we train you to recognize and speak out on unsafe working conditions so that everyone arrives and goes home safely. Learn about careers in construction at georgiaconstructioncareers.com. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Keeping It Real with Najee Wilkins. I am your host. Happy Friday Eve. A uh, lot to get into today. We're going to be highlighting Southwest DeKalb's program, uh, talking a little bit about what they have going. Some really good um, athletes on both sides of the ball. So we're going to bring on head coach Marion Bell at 240. That will start us off later on in the show and obviously we'll conclude my thoughts on handouts for the weekend but we're gonna get into some track and field obviously some football um we'll talk about some basketball as well gotta talk about grayson and kale them both playing in the throne national tournament that is being broadcasted on nba tv currently right now so we'll talk about that as well but we're gonna start the show with some football news and we actually got a graphic we want to show you guys but it was just announced uh, a couple days ago that buford has officially announced what this schedule is going to look like for this year so i just want to go over it and talk about some of the key matches that they are going to play. All right, y'all. So here it is right here. So it looks like to start the season, I know it's kind of hard to see, but that first one right there is going to be Langston Hughes. So that is their first scrimmage to start off the year. I think a pretty intriguing matchup between both teams. Obviously, um, a new era now at Langston Hughes. No more Prentice Aaron Nolan. He's at Ohio State. So can't wait to see what they're going to look like at the quarterback position. Obviously, got a really great group. Got some good offensive linemen. You go and look at um, Dontrell Glover. Tavares Dice, who just committed to Auburn. Uh, they got some nice pieces. Um, obviously, still got some good pieces on the deepest side of all, uh, Quavian Pitts as well. So, they got some good pieces in there. I'm curious to see how they look. That'll be a great scrimmage to look at. And then, we've been talking about this matchup a little bit on our, on both of our shows, me and Craig's. But playing Milton to open the season, I mean, that's going to be an intriguing matchup to, to say. Nonetheless, I've seen one of them was talking about it. And a few people said they actually had Milton winning that one pretty big, 34-13. Um, so that's interesting to see in the comment section of our shows. People have been saying that. But um, I'll save the predictions for later on. But I think that's an intriguing match with open season. Then they're going to play Benedictine. Benedictine, obviously, they're going to lose Luke Cromenhawk, um, who is now at Florida State. So I'm curious to see how they look like offensively now. Obviously, they can run the ball. They can pass it. Um, but they got some good pieces in there. So I think that's a good week two game. Obviously, what stands out so far, y'all, is usually that Buford has a out-of-state opponent. So far, it doesn't look like they're going to have any out-of-state opponent this year. Then the next matchup, they'll have a bye week. Then they're going to play Roswell. Same kind of thing. Roswell has really good players. Uh, but it's interesting to see after K.J. Smith graduated, went on to UNK, who's going to be their starting quarterback. Obviously, they got a nice piece in Saquon Smith because he can do a little bit of everything on both sides of the ball. But how will they look uh, next year as well? So that is the next matchup. And then the nitty-gritty one, man. I think must-see TV. Uh, it's probably going to get picked up, GPB or us on Peter Sports Network, but they're going to play Douglas County on the road um, September 13th, man. That is a marquee matchup, and you guys all know they have DJ Bordeaux as their starting quarterback now. Um, that's going to be intriguing to kind of see uh, what happens there. And obviously Christian Langford as well, who is now at Langston Hughes. I meant to mention that earlier. But I can't wait to see it, man. It's going to be a great matchup between both of those teams on the road. I think a marquee matchup uh, between both opponents. Can't wait to see who kind of comes out on top, especially with that linebacking core that Buford has. C.J. Sibley, Montrez Walker, Jaden Parati, and then they're really good at the defensive line uh, position as well with Bryce Perry, right? So that's an intriguing one. Then they get into the uh, one more, I think, non-region matchup, which is against Discovery. Um, so that would be intriguing. Then they get into the kind of the region schedule with Collins Hill. Can't sleep on them. It's always a tough, obviously, matchup. Uh, they're going to be probably better this year. Can't wait to see the steps forward that T.J. Wilcox is able to do this year. And obviously got a really great receiver slash athlete in the C.J. Hector. Really good defensive front and control web. And obviously Deuce Geralds. So can they take the next step forward under head coach Drew Swick, who's been doing a good job there. Then they're going to have the Kula, followed by Central Gwinnett on October 18th. Then they're going to play Mountain View uh, October 25th. And then their final game of the season will be against Mill Creek. So 
The region is going to be interesting to see. I'm not going to say it's a cakewalk region because you don't know what's going to really happen. Um, still very early. But I think the marquee matches, if I had to circle them, got to go, got to put Milton on there. Got to definitely put uh, Benedictine. And you got to put, obviously, Douglas County, um, September 13th. Those are marquee. I'm going to wait to reserve comment kind of on what the region is going to look like because I don't know. I don't know how good Mercury is going to be this year. But I know they got Shane Throg Martin coming back. But they're going to have a new tailback now after Ken Robinson obviously graduated as well. They're going to have some new pieces at right receiver. A lot of their juniors and seniors graduated. So can't wait to see how that looks. But those are the marquee matchups. That's their schedule. Thank you, Craig, for pulling that up for me. Um, but that is my reaction to it. I think it's going to be intriguing to see how it comes out. And last year they had a really good schedule. They played St. Francis Academy from Baltimore. Then they played Mallard Creek. But this year they are staying in-state and playing some of the top uh, teams to kind of start with their non-region schedule. And then there's another one we'll talk about in a second that I'll have Craig pull up, but not right now. Uh, Tyler Atkinson is set to join Athletes First. Uh, this was announced actually today. So I just want to get into a little bit of that. Um, athletes First, if you guys all know, it, they represent uh, NFL athletes, coaches, and coaching personnel. Um, so another big, you know, kind of deal for, for Tyler, who obviously landed his first NIL deal here. Uh, I think it was a couple of months ago, actually, he did. So I think it's just another big stepping stone for him and, and what he wants to do and accomplish. And I think he is – uh, doing it the right way, obviously. He's, he's using his name, image, and likeness to put himself even more out on the map and, and setting up opportunities for himself not only uh, when he goes to college but also on uh, the high school level as well. So I think that's, that's a definitely a big thing. And you guys can go uh, follow him on Twitter at tyler 16 Accident. But that was announced earlier this morning at 1024. So I think that is, that is big. They represent a lot of big-time uh, athletes. They're based out of California. Um, out of what they've been able to do. Just real quick, athletes first, as he said, via their post, four straight years on top, eight first-round selections, four straight years with the most first-round selections, top 50 selections, top three uh, selections as well. Players that they've represented that have been on there, so a couple of names for you guys, C.J. Stroud, uh, the rookie of the year in the NFL. They've done Jameer Gibbs, running back, who's at the Lions, um, had a really good year this past year. Uh, Van Ness was another one, an edge rusher. Jones, offensive tackle. Forbes was a cornerback. They also done offensive tackle Harrison. Uh, Brian Breesey from Clemson. And uh, Nola Smith, the edge rusher, who was taken by the Eagles. So, shout out to them. This is some of the people that they have represented. And they, uh, they've they been doing their thing. So, that is who uh, Tyler Atkinson signed with. So, I think that is really intriguing to follow. And then, we had another big one. I know Craig's very high on this quarterback uh, out of Valdosta. But he just picked up a Georgia offer. Actually, his name is Todd Robinson, so I know we got his graphics for it. But here he is right here. So that's his Twitter, at Todd Robinson, 561. It says, all glory to God, extremely blessed to receive my first SEC offer from Georgia football. I think that's really intriguing. He had a really great year this past year, y'all. Over 1,000 yards passing, nine touchdowns. Also had 1,000 yards on the ground and five touchdowns as well. So they had a pretty good start uh, to the season last year. You know, faltered off a little bit, but were able to make the playoffs. Curious to see kind of what he's able to do, his progression going from his junior year into his senior year now. And they got some good pieces. Obviously him, got to go with Jalen Copeland, who's really good as well, that their cornerback is actually going to be on campus at Georgia this weekend, actually, from what I seen earlier on uh, on X. So they got some good pieces. The question is going to be, can their coach, can, can a team put it together and, and make a deep playoff run? But Robinson is going to be a, a key cornerstone piece of that puzzle and it'd be interesting to see what leaps he takes forward but he also has offers from middle tennessee state obviously as you see here in the picture georgia maryland james madison georgia southern hawaii fau troy umass and more he's up over double digit offers so far um in his career so that is going to be a name to follow and see what they can do in the spring and obviously the summer and, and going into the fall of the season so thank you craig for pulling that up uh we'll keep rolling more football news. Uh, play I wanted to shout out was from Roswell, offensive lineman Andrew Stargell. So he's continued to kind of create some nice buzz for himself. He has 32 offers, as I've seen on his Twitter to date. His major offers include Kentucky, Pittsburgh, Georgia Tech, USF, Boston College, UCF, Georgia Southern, Georgia State, and Memphis. Most recent offers were NC State, which he picked up today, App State, and Vandy. So he has been a big cornerstone piece for them, and I can't wait to see kind of his progression. I think he's going to take an official visit this weekend to Pittsburgh. So he's going to be obviously a big part of the offensive line. Last year they had uh, the Notre Dame commit, Andrew Rosinski, I believe, um, who ended up having a real good year for them. So they got another you know stellar offensive lineman 
for the Roswell Hornets. So uh, he has been blowing up, and he seems like he's picking up an offer pretty much every day. Uh, so wanted to kind of give him a shout out, talk a little bit about him and, and what he's been able to do. Um, also, what I've seen is Cass, they announced their spring schedule um, on their Twitter. Uh, I've seen the spirit of Brody McWhorter. So how it looks so far, y'all, um, it's basically going to be they're going to start April 27th. So about a month from now, it's going to be the first practice from 8 a.m. to 1030. And then the other practices are going to be pretty much in the afternoon uh, going forward. So uh, April 29th will be the second practice, April 30th, May 1st, May 2nd, May 6th, May 7th, May 8th. Uh, May 9th and then May 10th um, and all those practices after the first one that is in the morning the rest of the practice will be at 345 come 615 uh, for the cast column and can't wait to see what they're going to be able to do I'm sure they're going to have a lot of people on campus uh, checking them out a lot of media people as well but that is their practice schedule that's what they got going for the spring as well and then the announce opponent uh, could probably just be a blue white game but I did not see opponent when it when it was announced so that's the latest on that as well. Um, another big story I wanted to hit on real quick was from Radai Nabosi of Rivals.com. So as you guys all know, the big news going into the week was about um, Justice Terry, right? Justice Terry flipped from Georgia to USC. But per him, per Radai Nabosi, he's actually going to be on campus this weekend or is expected to be on campus this weekend at Georgia. I thought that was something interesting to share, uh, to say the least. I mean, that's that's pretty quick. Went, went there for a visit uh, with USC, committed, and then now he's going to be uh, back at Georgia for a visit. So I think it just goes to show that that, that recruitment is all the way open. Um, it's probably going to be uh, a lot of competition, um, probably you know a race all the way up until it is commitment or, or signing day when he signs on the dotted line. I, I, like I said, and we said on our podcast earlier this week, you can go check him out. I don't think that commitment is done until he officially signs on the dotted line. Everybody knows that pretty much those who follow recruiting. And I don't think Georgia's going to stop. I think Georgia's going to continue to have him on campus and try to, you know, land his services. They have before. They had had his commitment for the longest. So I just think that shows that they are going to uh, continue to recruit him very, very hard. So I wanted to point that out. And the last football topic I wanted to hit on for this segment, um, it was just announced actually via Hayes Fawcett of On3. But you guys all know it's a really talented player out in Jessup, Georgia. Plays for Wayne County. And that is elite 2025 linebacker Tavion Wallace. So he's officially announced his top 12 schools. Um, he is 6'1", 220. Um, it's very, very, very good. But here's his top 12. So we got Tennessee, Louisville, Kentucky, Georgia, Michigan, Missouri, Florida State, LSU, Auburn, Florida, South Carolina, and then Arkansas. So those are his top 12 schools. In-state Georgia is one of them as well. And then a lot of out-of-state schools. Um, as well, so I think it'd be interesting to see where he ends up landing, and he's narrowed down his list to 12 schools. So, pretty great player from Wayne County. Can't wait to see what they're able to do this next year. But um, man, y'all just go roll this tape. He does a lot of things well, to say the least. But that's going to conclude the football segment for now. We are going to go ahead and go to lacrosse. So, as you guys all know, I dropped my rankings uh, this past week um, for lacrosse. Go to scorytl.com, get the full list of the rankings. But North Paulding, they continue to be number one. They took the top spot after defeating last year this week. They're the only undefeated team in 7A so far. But Lambert jumped up very high. They jumped up two spots. I almost put them number one, but I was like, I'm going to wait. But they already picked up some big wins. They beat West Forsyth 11-5. They beat uh, Buford in a very entertaining game, 15-13. to So they are high on my list. And Lambert looks like they're getting back to form. You know, last year, a pretty good team. Uh, made it all the way to the, to the state championship before losing to uh, West Forsyth, who won their first ever state championship. So Lambert is looking like they're rounding into form at the right time. As you guys all know, this is an important week because it's the week right before spring break for pretty much most of the schools out here in Georgia. I think it's a few more that will have like the second or third week. But very important week, and they're getting hot at the right time. So they have catapulted to my top two team as well. Buford is three. Uh, Walton is four, and West Forsyth is five. I'm still trying to give West Forsyth the benefit of the doubt because um, I know the, the, the roster is not the same as it was last year, but they still have some really good pieces. And they're a type of team, if they can get hot at the right time, you know, they could be pretty, pretty, pretty dangerous. So that is the top five. It is followed by East Coweta and then Hillgrove, Mill Creek, Mountain View, and obviously Milton. So that is my rankings for that. Um, and then 5A, 6A got a new number one for the second consecutive week. 
uh, Roswell. They reclaimed the spot. They got two out-of-state victories this past week. Cannon uh, from North Carolina and then Lake Norman Charter from North Carolina as well um, for this week. So North Forsyth had that rank for the longest, suffered two losses, so they dropped the number two for me. And then Blessed Trinity moved up, followed by Alpharetta and Lasseter to round off the top five as well. So I just think Blessed Trinity, they've been having a, a good season, and they're moving to the top three for me just based off what, they, what they've what they been doing. And they beat a top-ranked Class A 4A team this year as well. And then they had River Ridge at 6, Cambridge 7, Sequoia 8, Great Atlanta Christian 9. And then for the first time in probably about five, six weeks, Alice Hill is back in the rankings at number 10. And it's a team that, as you kind of seen last year, they're 4-0 right now currently in their area. Alatuna got hot and had a really deep playoff run last year. Uh, so they're getting hot. And a lot of people have had Alatuna, especially going into the preseason, as a top team. You know, So I think they're rounding into form. They're going to have a big-time matchup, which we're going to talk about here in just a second this week. So they're going to get to prove their medal, being back in the rankings, especially when they go up against this top-ranked team. So can't wait to see what they're able to do in this matchup. We'll talk about it in a second. But I can't wait. I think it's going to be very, very intriguing to see what happens there. But that is my rankings uh, for 5A, 6A. And then last but not least, Class A, 4A, Fellowship Christian has continued to impress me. They claim the top spot. They've won four of the past five games. Uh, they only have uh, – we have three losses so far on the season, but they played a tough schedule. Uh, they defeated Harrison 10-5, Lovett 13-9, and Pace Academy 15-7. And then number two, Wesleyan, number three, Westminster, number four, North Oconee, and number five, Whitewater rounds out the top five. And then there's not a lot of movement, really in the top five, and then top ten, East Forsyth, Trinity Christian, Stars Mill, uh, Pace Academy, and Mount Perrin Christian. So on the boys' side, I won't talk about the girls because I'll leave that for my girls' show on Tuesdays, but that is the rankings. That's how I kind of evaluated it, and those are the teams that have impressed me so far, and I think right now I'm not sleep sleeping on Walton either. They are in my top four. I think they are very, very dangerous, and it's going to set up an intriguing matchup towards the end of the season between North Paulding and Walton. Um, I can't wait to see what comes out on top as both of those teams are top uh, four teams in the rankings that I put together. So can't wait to see how that looks. Can't wait to see what comes out on top of that as well. So those are my rankings. Those are my thoughts. And then before we go to break, I will talk about a couple of the top matchups before we get into the, the film breakdowns in just a second. But Cambridge Buford, right? Buford picked up a big win against Peachtree Ridge, 19-6 mm -hmm. um, the other night. Uh, so my curious question was, you know, how would they kind of respond after losing to Lambert? Lambert's been winning a lot of those matches against them. They're in the same area, but they did pretty good, uh, winning 19-6. And then Cambridge is a top-10 team in 5A, 6A. They've won three of their last four games. So can't wait to see on this one who kind of comes on top. Both are top-10 teams in their uh, classification so far. And the next matchup is Alpharetta versus North Paulding. North Paulding is the number one team in 7A. And are the, like I said before, the lone undefeated team defeated last year to seven five, but uh, Alpharetta they are a top team in their area as well, and they're currently on a five game winning streak. So they've been playing really, really, really good. And as you can see, I'm not the only one that thinks the top matchup Thunder uh, Lax Club also has it as a top matchup. And here's what they had to say about it. So Alpharetta travels to Paulding County to take on North number one North Paulding on Thursday night. Wolfpack are undefeated to this point with tough tests against the Raiders. North Paulding has been scoring at 12.8 goals per contest and holding teams to 2.6 goals per game. The Raiders' offense is scoring 13.75 goals per game, keeping teams to 6.25 goals uh, per game. So it's a great matchup between both. The Wolfpack are starting to play some tougher competition, but yet to see some of the top 7A teams in the state. With the playoffs just around the corner, the bracket is starting to shape up. Alpharetta knocked off North Forsyth to take Class 5A, 6A area. Three top seed come playoff time. Plenty of talent on both rosters and a big momentum game right before spring break. So that is one of the top matchups as well. And the last but not least, before we take our break, Blessed Trinity versus Alatuna. Talked about Alatuna, what they've been able to do. to 9-5, 4-0 in their area so far. But can they beat a really top team, a top three team, and Blessed Trinity in this massive matchup tonight between both of those opponents? It's going to have a lot to do with the rankings. As I said, Alatuna, they have... Uh, start the season three, three and four, but right now they've won four consecutive games, and six of their last seven games they've won as well. So they are getting hot at the right time, and they have put me on notice as well. And then, like I said, Blessed Trinity already had some marquee wins so far, beating Cambridge, West Forsyth, and Fellowship Christian to date as well. So they have been doing 
fifth day in the saving league. So it's kind of kind of a lot going on with that matchup. Like yeah, I said, Bus Trinity number three. And then Alatuna is a top team as well. So can't wait to see man who comes out on top. But that's all I got for right now for the cross. You guys check it out. Those are the top matches. We're gonna thank our sponsors and be back on the other side. Hey, is the power off on this? I don't know. Just take it off. Safety violation, unsafe work conditions. In the construction trades unions, safety is our highest priority, and we train you to recognize and speak out on unsafe working conditions so that everyone arrives and goes home safely. Learn about careers in construction at georgiaconstructioncareers.com. What you doing? Hey, just finishing this claim to get Dave back on the road. Nice. I wonder what Dave's doing. You do your thing. We've got you covered. All right, guys. So welcome back. So we got some uh, film breakdowns that we're going to do today. Obviously, we got uh, Tyler Burlock from Cambridge High School. So we're going to talk a little bit about his tape, uh, 2025 class. And then we have Jalen Metlock, of, formerly of Parkview, now at South Gwinnett. Looks like he transferred over. We're going to talk about his tape and what stands out. But we're going to start with Tyler Burlock of Cambridge High School out here in Milton, Georgia. So here's the first play right here. As you see, gets bounces it to the outside. Good cut right there. Makes the defender miss right there for the touchdown. Excellent play right there. Boom, boom, he is. Good cut to the outside. Here's the defender. Strong enough, breaks the tackle. Scores the touchdown. Incredible play right there. And here he is in between the tackles, breaking that tackle. And then, as you guys can see, the burst of speed right here. And here comes the other defender. He's going to break this tackle too. Takes it all the way for a touchdown, so great play right there. And here he is in the red zone. Boom, makes the defender miss, makes two miss, and gets it all the way to the one-yard line. So as you guys can see, he's making, you know, cuts in the hole, making these defenders miss, running in between tackles right here. You know, make two people miss in the hole. It's a good job with his speed and his burst, getting to the outside, scoring another touchdown. And this one's my favorite play. I'm actually going to slow this down afterwards. But look at what he does on this play, y'all. Breaks that tackle. My goodness, I mean, that is excellent right there. So, as you see, here's the instant replay. So, again, see the box is pretty loaded. All right, good job by 71 right here, securing the linebacker. Looking him go in between the hole. He is right here to the left. And looking to break this tackle in the hole, right? Use the burst of speed. Look at this stuff on. My goodness, I mean, that right there is yeah, textbook. Good. That's how you get it done. That's how you, you know, turn that into a big play. That should have easily been maybe a two, three-yard gain. And then right here, in between the tackles, makes the defender miss. Turns on the Jets right here. Boom, makes the defender miss as well. Turns that into a touchdown. Same thing. Here is against Creekview. Good job going to the hole. Good jump cut inside the hole. And then all the way for the touchdown. Then same thing right here. In the hole, makes the defender miss. Look at this cut. I mean, excellent jump cut right there in the red zone to score the touchdown. And here he is in the playoff game against Hiram. Running in between the tackles, getting to the outside. Big time game right there. Nearly scores before he gets uh, tracked down. Here he's in the red zone, running in between the tackles and scoring a touchdown. And here he's right here. Good jump cut. Boom, look at that move right there. Goodness. So I had to slow this down. I'm happy to pause it, Craig. So you can see it's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. About seven in the box, right? So he does a good job. But what I love, too, about his game is his vision. So I'm going to have you roll it, Craig, a little bit and then pause it. Boom. So, as you can see, okay, I'm not going to go where there's no area, no open space for me, right? So, does a good job reading it, and that's what I love about his game, too, his vision. So, he sees that hole opening right here. Receiver does a good job right there of securing that edge. Look at this jump cut right here. I mean, defender absolutely just touching air right there. Great play. Good jump cut. Great job right there. Textbook form. And then right here, in between the tackles, make a defender miss. Look at this. Got to slow it down. And I'm going to have you uh, roll that one more time, Craig. That one right there. All right, so as you get right here, I'll pause it for me. So two defenders right here. So, again, he should be dead to rights right here. But as you guys can see, look what he's going to do to the defender. He's going to jump cut. Great part of his game. 
and defender's gonna try to get him, and the, the defender's basically touching air again. Watch. Boom, look at this jump cut. Look, three defenders right there. He should be tackled. Let him do the jump cut. Defender tries, misses the tackle. He scores a touchdown. I mean, that's excellent. And then right here, as you guys can see, shows the skills as a receiving threat as well. Short yard gain right there, but takes it for 10 plus yards. And then right here, in between the tackles, look at that one, two, three. Three guys missed before he's finally tackled. And then right here in the hole, good jump cut yet again. Taking it for a nice eight to 10 yard gain. And then here he is running through in between the tackles, turns that into a nice 40 plus yard gain right there. All right, here you go, same thing. In between the tackles, we're gonna break that tackle right there. And look at him get to the outside, pick up the first down. I mean, it's excellent. And then right here, you see a little bit of the return game. Now watch the bitch, pause it from Craig. Again, not a lot there. Look, look at all the, all the pieces right there, y'all. So pause right there. So good. This is a lot of traffic to kind of navigate through, right? But he sees just the smallest sliver, the smallest opening. Instead of bouncing to the outside, he goes through the middle, and then he bounces it for a big time return. Watch this, y'all. Boom! Right there, looking to bounce it right there, turn into a big game. I mean, excellent right there. Vision. That's what stands out about this game. I love his vision. Love his burst, and obviously his jump cuts. Same thing right here. Let him get to the outside. Let him turn on the Jets right there. Boom. Good jump cut yet again. Big time game. And then boom. Look at him break that tackle right there. Boom. Look at that jump cut. Go back one more time right there, Craig, where you jump cut it. So watch this. Again, he's excellent at this. Boom. Right here. So he should be tackled right there by 24. But does a good job jump cutting inside, making him miss. And then right here, it just shows the speed. Gets to the outside. Finds the opening. Turns into a big game. Yet again. Boom, here he is right here. Good jump cut to the outside. Turn into Jets. I mean, good job right there. So, that's his film. Um, I like it. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I really like it. I, I think he has, you know, a, a definitely a strong potential. Um, let me find real quick. So, I think he has a great burst. Um, in my page, you guys can see, right, he's getting to the second level, the third level, and turning them into big scores. Uh, rushed for over 1,200 plus yards, I think. 10 plus uh, rushing touchdowns this past year. I think he has great vision. He can see the openings, even if it's small, and, and can turn them into, you know, big time gains as well. And I love his jump cuts. As you guys can see, there's multiple plays on that film where he is jump cutting, making the defender miss, uh, and 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 turning it into, you know, big time plays. So his jump cuts are great. He uses them at the right time. He doesn't overdo it um, as well. So I love that part of his game. He showed that he can also be a receiver or a receiving option outside the backfield. So that's another part that stood out to me as well. And I like, too, you you might look at his size and be like, oh, well, that guy, he's only can be an outside back, only be a scat back. No, he can run in between the tackles, too, as we've seen several times in the hole, making guys miss, using the stiff arm as well. That also stood out to me as well. And then I like how he welcomes contact. I like to, you know, get through, drop his shoulder a little bit, and he finishes out his run. So I think that's the biggest thing. My only critique, and it's not really a critique, just add some pass blocking on there. That's all I would say with your huddle. Add some pass blocking. The reason I say that is as a running back, you know, it's a devalued position. College coaches want to see, can you protect the quarterback as well, right? Obviously, that film is great. But they're going to want to know, okay, can you be one-on-one -on -one with a middle linebacker and pick up a blitz, right? Can you, you know, handle chipping off the edge with a elite edge rusher, helping out the quarterback, and then kind of dropping out and being able to catch a pass. So that's the only thing I would say. Just add to your film is the pass blocking because when college coaches see it, and you send them their film, they're going to want to know, can you pass protect, can you pass block? Other than that, I think it's a great film. So, appreciate you sending that in as well, uh, Tyler. Um, really enjoy breaking down your film, and uh, thank you. Really appreciate it. But, all right, we're going to move on. Yeah, one more guy we're going to talk about today in the South Gwinnett. Quarterback says linebacker Jalen Metlock. He's formerly of Parkview, so you can see his Parkview freshman film. And for me, man, I'm going to be honest. I don't know what position they're going to have him play there. But I think you project the best. This is just my opinion. I think you project the best as a linebacker. Your instincts, how you can see the ball, how you can tackle, I think that that position is best for you. But you're going to see some quarterback highlights as well. All right. So as you can see, it's his freshman tape right here. He's at quarterback. Going to probably see a little bit of read option right here. Good job keeping it, getting to the outside, showing his athletic ability, turning into a nice 15, 20 plus yard gain. Same thing at quarterback. And right here, like the ball on the outside shoulder for the receiver, only where he can get it, not privy to an interception. Now, watch him at the linebacker spot. Look at the instincts right here. 
boom, look at him shed right there, get in the middle, slow down the game right in his tracks right there. And then here he is back at quarterback. So nothing really there. And as you see, he's going to wait since he sees the opening. Try to get, you know, positive yards right there. Nothing really there. And then right here, probably his best throw on all of his film. Good job leading the receiver right there past the corner right there for an easy touchdown. Right here he goes right here, a little bit of read option. Nice five, modest six-yard gain. All right, same thing here, linebacker. Watch the instincts. So I actually slowed this one down. I mean, does an excellent job right here. So as you can see. Okay, right here. Okay, so watch them guys mirror the middle of the field. I'm going to go slow so we can break it fully down. Okay, so he's going back. Boom, stop it right there, Greg. All right, so as you guys can see, Grayson right here, they're trying to create some confusion, right? You got your slot receiver going in. You got your tight end going in. You got your other receiver coming over. Now watch him stay in the sight of the quarterback so he doesn't make this, this throw. Watch this. Boom, he's in that one. Look at him get the crosser right there. And then look at him get inside right here, too, to cut that route off. So he cuts off three routes right there in that time at playing the middle like a linebacker position. Then he comes up to come stop the ball carrier in his tracks as well. That's an excellent form, excellent job right there in coverage and coming down and making the tackle. And the same thing right here at the middle linebacker spot. Watch 15 right in the middle. Now slow this down. Watch how fast he comes off the line. Boom. Completely negates the right guard, the left guard, and look at him disrupt this play completely and turn it into an incompletion right there. And then here he is back at quarterback. Skin it out quick. Nice throw right there in stride for your receiver. But same thing, like I said, I think he projects best at linebacker. Watch it, watch it again. Boom, right through the right guard, making a big-time play in the backfield, TFL. I mean, absolutely love it. And same thing right here. Nothing's really there. Takes off, shows his athletic ability, pick up some positive yardage yet again. And same thing right here. Got a little bit of a read option. Gets to the outside. Picks up some good positive yards, nearly a first down, good nine-yard gain right there. And then here, right here, probably one of his better plays. Nothing's really there. Breaks the tackle. Throws it in for a touchdown. Good play right there. And then here, incredible against South Gwinnett, right? One, two, three. Makes three guys miss. Still going. And then right there, turns into a positive gain. I mean, there's nothing there, but does a good job right there, keeping the play alive. Same thing. Here comes the pressure. Breaks the tackle. Breaks another tackle. And then, you know, just again, turns into some positive yards. Nothing really there. And then boom, right here. Read option, looking to get to the outside. Turning into a first down. Nice running gain right there. Another clip right here from South Gwinnett. Good stiff arm right there. Again, turning into some positive yardage. Now here he is at linebacker. Now let him come downhill right here. Good tackle yet again. I mean, that's a minimal two yard gain. Right here, boom. I mean, he's moving so fast defensively. I mean, he's just absolutely stopping his plays. Now, this is a toss play. Watch him. Boom. Quarterback tries to step up. There he is right here. Coming downhill. Another TFL added to it. I mean, absolutely love him at linebacker. Okay, boom. Here he is. Coming fast. Gets past the block. Another TFL. So, slow this down again for a reason. So, watch how fast he comes. So, boom. Plays going. Looking to break that block right there. Come downhill, make a big time tackle right there. Another TFL added to the credit. And boom, here he is right here. Look how fast he comes down. Boom. Nowhere for the running back to go. Big time stop. And as you can see, that is the tell of the tape. So, again, it'd be interesting to see what South Carolina has in store for him, what position they're going to have him play. But I think for me, um, I'm sure Craig would agree with me, I think he projects the best at linebacker. I think his instincts, how he comes downhill, how he makes the big tackles, you just see, like, that guy being a great linebacker on, you know, the 6A level and being able to come down here and make big hits, force fumbles, like, and then instinctually when you look at the film, it just looks like he plays best at that type of position. So I think he has good block set and ability. I think he's very physical um, as well. And like I said, phenomenal instincts. And I think he projects the best at linebacker. I think if he wants to play next level, I think linebacker is where it's at. Now his quarterback highlights are obviously good too. You know, he made some good throws in there. You know, read option as well, but as far as instincts, his size, how he looks, just looks more like a natural position for him, I think, is that linebacker. But that's just my thoughts. We'll obviously follow it and see what he's able to do 
far as on South Gwinnett and what he can do. So that'll be really, really intriguing. But that's my thoughts. Appreciate you guys sending the film. Keep it up. Keep um, DMing me on Twitter with the film. Love breaking down the film on the show. So you guys keep it up there. All right. So we're going to go to uh, track and field. Uh, before we take a quick short break, she'll be joined by Coach Marion Bell in just a second. But all right. Carson Baker. I think it's going to be a name to follow, guys. I know he plays football and he runs track. But he just said another new PR. I mean, he's been saying PRs all year. But had another great meet. 200-meter. Um, it's his first 200-meter of the season. He said his new PR at 21.93, and actually that was so fast. That is Georgia top 50 as well. So Carson Baker's been doing his thing. As you guys all know, Lexington Hughes has been a great team all season long um, at track and field. And then Dorian Page was second in that event at 22 seconds, and then followed by Bo Jacobs with 22.28. So Carson Baker's going to be a name to watch. Um, he's a 2026 class as well. Like I said, he plays. Uh, football, 100 meter, one of his best times is 10.65. So he does a lot of things well. He's going to be one uh, to watch for them as well. Um, and then Brookwood, they set a new PR as well. Uh, in the 4 by 100, they set a new school record at 41.70 this past weekend. So got to give them a special shout out um, as well. You guys can go to Brookwood TF on Twitter or X, I should say, to go find out what that score is. So that's the latest there. And then we'll go to basketball real quick. Um, so St. Pius X actually is going to have a new basketball head coach. Um, so they're going to welcome on Will Cloyd as their new basketball head coach. Uh, he's been an assistant with Coach Parr, who, as you, as you guys all know, surpassed 300 wins this season. Uh, he's been on the staff for 11 straight seasons, and it's going to be their new head coach for their program is getting his opportunity for St. Pius. And St. Pius had a really good year, y'all. They were 22-7. and seven. This past year, uh, made a good playoff run as well, and they got some really, really good pieces. And then speaking of pieces, that leads us to our next quick announcement. Harris Reynolds uh, set to run with Team Curry on the AAU circuit. So if you guys don't know who Harris Reynolds is, he plays, again, for St. Pius X. Nice guard with some good size, point guard 6'4", um, 2026 class, and he actually had a lot of accolades this past year. Uh, he was GBCA, Georgia Basketball Coaches Association, uh, 6A North All-State member, and he also was announced first team All-Region. So he is going to be running with Team Curry on the AAU circuit and had a really good year. I can't wait to see how he develops as well for uh, the program. So that is the basketball news. Um, that's the latest in track and field. But we're going to take another quick short break, thank our sponsors, and should be back on the other side with Southwest Cavs head coach. I don't know. Just take it off. Safety violation. Unsafe work conditions. In the construction trades unions, safety is our highest priority, and we train you to recognize and speak out on unsafe working conditions so that everyone arrives and goes home safely. Learn about careers in construction at georgiaconstructioncareers.com. What you doing? Hey, just finishing this claim to get Dave back on the road. Nice. I wonder what Dave's doing. You do your thing. We've got you covered. All right, guys, so welcome back. So we'll talk a little bit about Southwest Cab. I just uh, texted him uh, to kind of see. But they got some major athletes. I obviously want to ask about. They won their season opener this past year, August 18th. They defeated South Atlanta 20-6, to and then they also beat Redan 22-18 uh, in that game as well. And I think they showed some good promise last year, right? They had some close losses uh, to Haverhill Charter 21-15, uh, also to uh, Decatur 27-12. Uh, but I think they're moving in the right direction. Um, they got some really good athletes. Um, and actually, I'm going to ask Coach about this, too, uh, if he does and is able to come on. But their JV track team won their first ever DeKalb County School District Boys County Track Championship as well. So I kind of want to get his thoughts on that, see what he thinks as well um, on that end of the spectrum. But they got a really, really good and fast team. And I mean, a lot of their boys are running track and doing track and field this year. Um, and... 
you know, I think it's going to be, you know, really intriguing to kind of see as well. But we'll look real quick. I'm obviously going to ask Coach about it, um, kind of see their, their, their track schedule. Um, but their spring football schedule, how it kind of looks. So they're going to start April 30th, um, and their first practice is going to be then uh, at 4 to 7 p.m. Looks like all of their um, practices will be, and they will have practice May 1st, May 2nd, May 7th, May 8th. May 9th, and then they'll have their scrimmage game, um, and then they'll have another practice at Southwest of Cass Field. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, May 13th, and then they'll have practice nine, May 14th. So that's how it looks. We'll obviously ask them more about it. It looks like they have a game as well um, on that date, but I think they're moving in the right direction. Um, as again, their cornerback, Amari Scott, is going to be one to watch. Um, he's had a really good track season as well. I think their best player, probably Sam Turner. I mean, he has major offers, Alabama and more. Um, so, going to ask him all about, all about that. But without further ado, let's bring him on. Hey, Coach. How you doing? Hey, how you, hey, how you doing? I'm doing good, Coach. Appreciate you, you coming on. Doing good, Coach. Appreciate you coming yeah, on. No problem, man. Yes, sir. No problem. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you loud and clear? Uh, yeah, thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. Of course, Coach. So, you know, I, I want to get from your perspective, Ryan. I know last year was your first year as a head coach. Just, just talk, kind of talk about some of the challenges you faced, you know, uh, at South Lucy Cap, just in general, being being the head coach coming into your first year. Um, the, the main challenge was I took over an inexperienced team. The team that I took over was basically a JV team. None of those guys played Boston football except Therion Alexander, who is now at uh, BYU. Um, so trying to get a young team – up kind of um, senior heavy. So that was the biggest challenge, trying to get those kids to understand how to play and work for four quarters. And now that's why we kind of fell short a little bit last year. No doubt, Coach. And what would you say some of the biggest things you learned from that experience, an inexperienced group, but getting them to play well, what were some th biggest things you learned? I learned the kids. I learned my kids. So, And when I came in, I, I was looking at T-shirts and shorts thinking that I have these 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 great kids, these great athletes, and not knowing that they don't have enough experience to play varsity football. But now I know my kids. I know what they can and cannot do. And it allows me to coach them a different way. No doubt, Coach. And then what would you tell other coaches that, you know, in your position, taking over a new team, you know, inexperience, what advice would you just give them just to be able to come in and, you know, sometimes you hit the ground running as a head coach your first year. Sometimes, you know, you have, you know, a tough start. And, and you kind of trying to work all the kinks out. What would you just tell other coaches advice for your one? Uh, my advice for other coaches taking over new pro, you got to be consistent because if you're not consistent, that's how you lose your kids. Um, they won't believe in what you're doing if you're inconsistent with, with the work. No doubt about it, Coach. Now, um, obviously, you know, I've interviewed your son. Um, now I want to ask you, uh, you've been down here for a while, but what are some of the differences you've seen from just New Jersey ball and this here in Georgia? Uh, it's more kids that play. It's more high school. A kid here, a six-one jersey, he probably won't play football. He'll play basketball. Here you have two. You're gonna have two to three division one football players on that team. In New Jersey, you might twenty teams before you get. Got about. Yeah, you. sorry, Gary. Okay, sorry about that. A little bit with the connection. Now I want to talk about your team now, Coach. Just tell me a little bit about some of the talent you got this year. Tell me a little bit about your team you got. Uh, I have a, a more experienced team. I, can, but I do have some talented kids with uh, Sam Turner, a uh, uh, six one hundred and ninety five. Uh, has a multiple offers from Power Five schools. Brandon Gunn is a that also has offers. Um, Joshua Jonah back. Um, a transfer from came in to help us in back. So, um, and the that line is uh, Keon Murphy. Keon yeah, Murphy. Okay, Coach. Now, I wanted to ask you, obviously, about Sam Turner. Like I said, 6'1". About 195, 200 pounds. What what makes him special, Coach? 
No doubt about it, Coach. Now you I was yeah, I can hear you now. I'm sorry. I noticed the, the connection. But you say you say you saying the athleticism. Can you repeat what you said on, on Sam Turner again? Yeah, his he's a he's a big guy, but runs great routes and has very good sudden quickness. So it's hard for big guys to stick with because he's probably quicker than a bigger corner, but he's too big for a smaller corner. So that's what made the matchup with him so so difficult. No doubt about it. Now tell me a little about um, Amari Scott. I seen he PR'd in the 110 meters, coach, and the 300 meters. Uh, I know he's very fast. Just tell me a little bit about his game. What you like about him? Amari Scott is going to be a, a really good football and track runner here at Southwestern Tech um, because he grew. He's about 6'2", right? And he's probably probably going to grow another two inches. So he's going to probably be between a 6'3 and 6'4 corner who has mm -hmm. length, speed, and uh, he played defense in on his youth league. So he's physical. Got you, Coach. Now tell me a little bit about how you're looking at – I think you mentioned one of your running backs, but how you looking at the running back position going into this year? What are you excited about out of that group? Um, I think I think that group is probably what's going to put us over the edge because Joshua um, Joshua Jones was a star running back last year. He got hurt. And when, and when he got hurt, um, it kind of threw us off a little bit. Uh, but he's back. Uh, Tamir Rudolph is, is a junior, rising junior. He's back. Um, so we have we have uh, people with backs that's with varsity experience. So I look forward to watching those guys run. No doubt, Coach. And then uh, real quick, one more on offense. How, how are you looking at the quarterback position this year? Oh, Braylon Carter is going to be a sophomore, 6'3", 175 pound quarterback. He played well, um, so he's going. He's coming in as a starting quarterback. Okay, okay, got you, Coach. Now, now I want to ask you too. Um, I saw that your JV track team they ended up winning the DeKalb County School District Boys County Track Championship. When you see that, and you see some of your athletes that are coming up now that could be playing, the, you know, being rising juniors and they winning these type of championships. You know, what kind of crosses your mind? Speed of kills, man. We're going to be very fast under the ball, and we're going to use those track guys to play uh, on both sides of the ball, and it's going to help us take it to, the, to this region championship. No doubt about it, Coach. And, and then speaking of, I mean, you mentioned about the speed and speed killing. Um, how much of a luxury that is, Coach, to know you got athletes and guys you can just get them the ball to, and they're going to do their thing with it. They're going to be a playmaker. Side rear. Um, only because I just didn't know the kids and I didn't know who could do what. This year, I know all my kids. I know the guys. I know the guys that are quicker than that. So I know what I'm working with. And to have all that speed on the field at one time, it's going to be fun. No doubt, Coach. Now, I got to ask you, and I want you to throw out some players out there. Who has been impressing you so far in the weight room right now before you get into spring practice? Um... I have a, a, a rising junior uh, defense tackle. Uh, he's a little undersized, but he is very strong and explosive. Got you. And, and then, coach. Ten games for us last year. Ten games last year. Okay. Got you, coach. Now, uh, yeah. just talk a little about your spring schedule for the audience that don't know. I, I was able to see it, but how does spring kind of look for you guys? How is that kind of shaping up? Spring starts the thirtieth. That's after um, ten practice, nine practice in between there, and then on our spring game, we're gonna play Fred Evans, who had one corner in, in the um, the DB in the state, and we think he's number one receiver in the state. So we're looking forward to that No doubt, coach. And then you know, before we continue to move on, uh, who are some underrated players we should kind of watch for? I know you've mentioned some of them, but who's a guy that? Probably doesn't get the recognition he deserved that we should watch for at Southwest Academy this year. Um, I think uh, I, I with, with a lot of them know who they are after this year. Makai Lombard and Greg English. Makai Lombard and Greg English. Okay. Appreciate that, Coach. And then um, one more point I want to talk about, Brandon Gunn, right? Just tell me you mentioned him early on in, in, in the show. Just talk a little bit about him and what's impressed you about yeah. him so far. Um, Brandon is a leader. He's a leader on the field. He's a leader off the field. He's a leader. Ooh, like he's just a born leader. And he's a tough football player that can play multiple positions. 
He can play position on the back end. He, um, he's going to play some receiver for me, play quarterback some for me last year. Um, and we're going to even put him at tailback a little bit this year also. Wow. Okay, he's a phenomenal, coach. phenomenal athlete. Certainly, Coach. And then, and then tell me kind of what, what's your thoughts on your region schedule, Coach? What you got this year? Uh, you said what's, what's the toughest on the region? No, no. What, what's your thoughts on your region schedule? Um, I think the region schedule is fair. Um, we, we're going to come up with a really, really, really tough team. Marriage being one. Uh, St. Pius being another. Tucker, who we went to a shootout with. Um, so I think it's going to be fair. So I'm prepared for the no doubt, Coach. A couple more, I'll let you get out of here. Um, um, in your eyes, Coach, I've been saying, you know, you grew better this year. Um, what, what do you think this team can accomplish in 2024, Coach? Um, well, the first order of business is our short-term goal is to win the region. Um, and that's the, that's the number one thing. And then the second thing is getting the playoffs. Because we missed the, I think we missed the playoffs in the last three years. We haven't made the playoffs. But we want to get back to the playoffs so the kids can see what it's like. To, to play past uh, November. No doubt, Coach. And kind of final question, let you get out of here. I know you're busy. Talk, tell me a little bit about the, the group you got with you, just as far as your assistance coach and, and, and some of your staff that is with you that's going to help you get this team to where you guys want to be. Um, I have Jay Moses, uh, football back in New Jersey back in 2004. Um, we have really good coaching staff. Um, a really good coaching staff that we get on. No doubt about it. Well, Coach, I appreciate you so much talking a little bit about Southwest DeKalb. Uh, good luck in the spring, Coach. Hope to hear from you. And uh, good luck this upcoming season, Coach. How you, man? All right. Yes, sir. All right, guys. So there goes Coach um, Southwest DeKalb, Coach Marion Bell. If you guys don't know who he's the dad of, he is the dad of Jalen Bell, the four-star player from Grayson. Plays for the Grace of Rams, who's, you know, running track, setting PR records for himself. Sorry about the connection, Coach, but definitely appreciate you just coming on. I just wanted to highlight your group. Not a lot of people talk about Southwest DeKalb, but as you said, they got some dudes. Brandon Gunn, you got to watch out for those two edges that they got. Amari Scott's another one. And obviously, Sam Turner's going to be the big headliner as well for that group. So they got some talented guys, and they're going to be one to watch for as they try to, you know, win a region. But as you said, it will be in tough. They got the. Southwest the cab, they got a lot of speed, man. I think they're gonna surprise some folks this year. But when you got that speed and it can translate to the field and you got playmakers, it makes you dangerous, man. So they're gonna be one to watch for. That's my thoughts. I appreciate him coming on talking a little about his group. But all right. Now it's time to conclude with the top ten headlines for the weekend, presented by Georgia Construction Careers dot com, uh, to end the show out. All right, so I'm gonna start with number one. We'll be at Douglas County High School. Uh, they're gonna have some of the top top ten quarterbacks, top twenty five wide receivers, top twenty five defensive backs as well. They are handpicked the twenty twenty five class, twenty twenty six, and the twenty twenty seven class. Uh, so it'll be interesting. They're gonna have skill training and also one on one competitive drills with some of the top uh, performance coaches in the world. So that is this Friday at six p.m. at Douglas County High School, hosted by Route King. So that is the major event. Number two, got a big hoops event this weekend uh, on the Radar Hoops. Uh, is going to have their Atlanta Classic at Central Gwinnett High School. Uh, that is going to be uh, on Saturday. I'm trying to see all the details. Uh, yeah, so their location. So it's actually going to be, uh, starts actually tomorrow, March 29th to March 30th, uh, March 31st, excuse me, at Central Gwinnett High School and at Discovery High School. Uh, those addresses are for Central Gwinnett, 564. W. Krogan Street, and then 33, 1335, excuse me, Old North Cross Road for Discovery High School. So on the radar, if you guys don't know what that is, they are a major player in the basketball realm. Um, they just have these big events. They had the Birmingham Classic last week. Uh, they go all across Florida, all across the southeast, and just have these big events and these showcases for these kids to get exposure, and they have these big summer basketball tournaments. So uh, just wanted to highlight them. They do an excellent job of just giving the kids exposure, especially – on the AAU circuit, where is really where a lot of your exposure kind of comes from um, in the high school realm. So wanted to give them a shout-out. That is this weekend. 10U through 17U uh, will be it. But all right, if you guys didn't know, at number three, Grayson and Kel are both playing in the Throne National Tournament, actually playing right now or probably just concluded with Grayson. Uh, they both are in the Elite Eight. Grayson picked up a big-time win against Jackson Reed. Grayson is the four seed. They won 68-59. That actually was a great game. I think – 
Um, obviously, Jacob Wilkins, who's the son of Dominique Wilkins, um, he ob- obviously put on the show, um, human highlight reel at this point, had 15 points, eight boards, um, and then three steals and two assists. Um, and he was dynamic. And what I like about Grayson is that they got a, multiple players that can handle the ball, right? Jacob Wilkins, Jakari Harris, CJ Highland, um, Anthony Austin. Um, they looked real good to start the game. They were up like 20 plus points. Just watching here in the office, they just got to make sure when team tries to do the press press against them that they just watch their passes. I think that's why Jackson Reed was able to get back in the game. But nonetheless, man, they're 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 a deep group. They're a great group. Um, you know, Jakari finished that game with a double double, 14 points, 10 assists, and CJ Holland added 10. But yeah, it's, it's going to be tough competition. But I think Grayson got the right head coach, and I think they could potentially make a bid of of winning it all at the tournament. So. Um, had a pretty good opener. I know the coach is going to get on them, uh, you know, kind of how they finish at the end at the tournament. But they looked really good for the most part in that game. And Jacob Wilkins is a problem. So uh, they will be matched up actually today. Uh, let me see. Let you guys know who they're going to play today or are playing now. Uh, that's a bummer. Hold on one sec, y'all. Okay, so yes, they are matched up. Let's see. Give you guys a live update. Okay, so far as the matchups today, they're going to be playing actually at 3 o'clock. Excuse me. So they're going to play here actually about right about right now on NBA TV. So they are playing against Ridgeview, the Fosse from South Carolina. So that is the game today um, as well. And then as you guys all know, the Longhorns also played. Um, had a really good game. I got to give a shout out to CJ Brown. I mean, he's been magnificent what he's been able to do you know same thing they had got out to an early lead and then you know central cabarrus from north carolina started storming back but got to give a shout out to cj brown i mean the shots he was hitting he's a tough shot maker uh one of them i remember him hitting and putting him up five with like less than a minute to go and i mean he's completely surrounded and the defender's like right in his face and he pulls up hits the shot he had a great game 19 points six boards four assists four steals um and then jalen colin uh the sharp shoot a sharp shooter from deep at 16 points and three boards. They had four scores and double figures in that one as well. Um, so it's going to be interesting. And the reason I point that out, uh, Kale is actually going to play. Make sure I got it right. Hold on. I just had to see. Kale is actually going to play uh, the Explorers from Florida. So they're playing the number one seed tonight at 6.20 p.m. That one will be on the NBA app. You guys can watch that there. But the thing is, guys, which will be really entertaining, if both Kale and Grayson win, they will match up in the Final Four and play each other um, in the Final Four. So I think that is pretty cool. Grayson has won the last two of this of this matchup. If it were to happen, um, they won this past season, and then they won last year. So they are 2-0 and so far. I think it would be an intriguing matchup to see who goes to the, uh, the championship game in the national tournament. So that is the time, 6.20 p.m., uh, Kale versus the Explorers in the one seed, and then Grayson is playing right now. Probably just tipped off against Ridgeview from South Carolina. So you can watch those on the NBA app or NBA TV. All right, number four, got to talk about some of the top performances from this past week in boys sports. So a couple candidates that are on here, um, got to give a shout out to Parkview Baseball, and that is Makai Buckley. Uh, he went off in their uh, blowout win over South Gwinnett. Uh, me and Craig have been talking about, obviously, that region, the Parkview, the Graysons, the South Gwinnett. Uh, he went 4-for-4 four 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 with two triples, a uh, home run, and seven RBI. So he absolutely went crazy in that one. And then, obviously, Kate Brown, the superstar himself, uh, he continued his dominant stretch in four wins. He went 8-for-12, three home runs, four doubles, and 13 RBIs. He continues to be one of the best ones uh, in the state. And in the three-game series for Trace Callaway, Washington Wilkes baseball, he went five for six with a home run and six RBI. So that's top performances on that end. As far as track and field for this week, uh, for boys, Joseph Jacot from Westminster, he set a new school record in the 3,200 meter with a time of nine minutes, three seconds, and 13 uh, tenths of a second. And then you had Phillips Moore of Westminster as well. Uh, he hit his PR with a throw of 63 feet, eight feet. 8.5 inches took home the goal in the FSU high school relays and now has the farthest throw in the state so far this year so those are some of the top performances across both of those sports so far and then now we got to look at the track performances obviously we go to mile split at number five um 
think it's interesting. Uh, name, uh, Craig, you might remember this name, but Ali Dargan of Miller Grove. He just set his new season high and obviously a state high right now, 21.02 in the 200 meter uh, this past weekend at Napoleon B. Cobb DeKalb County Varsity Championships as well. If you guys don't remember Miller Grove, we had him featured on our Great Atlanta Bash this past year. And obviously Dargan seeing the speed in that game and obviously doing it on the track and field part as well. And then Evan Pearson, he set a new state high with a 46.73 time in the 400 at the Gwinnett County Varsity Championships as well. And then in the 1600, a uh, new uh, state record time right now in the state for this year. A new season best, Joseph Machinchi from Walton High School in the Cobb County Championships in the 1600 meter uh, with 4 minute 13 and 28 time. And last but not least, Aaron Jones in 300 meter hurdles set a new uh, state best for the season, 37-26 at the Gwinnett County Varsity Championship. So those are the new times as well there. Um, and also you had uh, Glazing Hughes once again setting up in their new um, 4 by 100 time with a 40-30 second time actually yesterday at the Panther Spring Classic, Spring Break Classic, excuse me, um, yesterday with a 40-30 time. So special shout out to you. And then Buford now. Buford and Westlake now hold the new fastest times in the state. Four by 200, Buford set it with a one minute, 26 second time. And then Westlake with a three minute, 12, 87 second time in the four by 400. So that's the latest there in track news um, and top performances from this past week. Now at number six, I just want to put you guys on game. I want to tell you guys about a player that you really should know about. And that is Jalen Wingfield, right? Formerly of Thomas County Central, he actually just transferred. You guys go check it out. Check out the interview on the YouTube page. Bacon Network, man. Y'all go holler at him. Go check him out. But he had the exclusive interview. He's actually transferred over. And the reason for the transfer, transfer is he wants to play kind of higher-end um, competition. Shout out his sophomore year. But he wants to show everybody, you know, obviously what he can do on the court and how great he is. Now, he stands at 6'7", 225. And peep this, guys. He is the son of D. Uh, D'Antonio Wingfield, who formerly played for the Seattle Supersonics, played about four years in the league, um, and he actually starred and went to University of Cincinnati, and that's currently where one of the offers that Jalen Wingfield holds right now. So I think it's interesting. It's going to be a name to know. It's definitely a name you could see blow up in the 26 class. There's not a lot of highly ranked players in the state in 2026. There's only, I think, about four or five players. But this is a name to know, Jalen Wingfield, now at Tri-Cities. He recently won UC All-American MVP at the Hoops, Di Hoops for Diabetes Classic this past week, and I highlighted on the show last week. He will be running also with AE5 on the Adidas circuit for AAU. If you guys don't know what AE5 is, do you know who one of the top players in the league is right now in the NBA? That's Anthony Edwards. So he has a AAU team. He's going to be running with that AAU team this summer. So you guys, check him out there, and go check out the interview. Bigger Network did a great job there talking to him, getting the intel on, the, the I think, the next great name in basketball. So when you see Jalen Wingfield blowing up, you can go back to this clip on the show, and this is a name to know. Uh, all the people in the hoop circuit definitely know his name, but that is a wildly um, known name that you should know, um, and I'll put you guys on game. So there we have it there. Number seven, the number seven uh, 17th annual summer basketball uh, camp is going to be happening. Uh, this is announced by Coach Mincy, Mario Mincy. Um, they're going to host their 17th annual Summer Jam tournaments at Bryan County High School, June 10th, June 11th. It just came out the other day. Several teams from last year's event made state playoff appearances this season. Um, and basically for one day, it's $100. Two days, it's 160 And they make the checks payable to Bryan County High School uh, if you want to attend. So what's so cool, guys, too, I think, you know, obviously I've been learning more about it. I had a head coach on. Um, I believe it was... I remember on my girls' show, Maynard Jackson. There we go. Maynard Jackson's head coach for the girls' basketball. And he was talking about how he knew his team would be special and could win a title. And he said it was going to these, you know, camps and things like that, going with his team, playing in Birmingham, playing in Alabama. But these camps like this are so cool because you can kind of start to gain that camaraderie with your group that's coming in, that's going to be playing on your basketball team, you know, the upcoming season. And you can kind of see what you got. You're going up against stellar competition. And you get to see kind of what your team is made of, how good they could potentially be um, in the upcoming season. So I think it's really intriguing. But that is the camp uh, at Bryan County High School. Um, I think it will be a great camp for um, teams to go to and kind of build that camaraderie and see what they can do. So that is number seven. Got a couple more before we conclude the show. 
Number eight, obviously we talked about some of the top baseball performances. There were a couple more that actually caught my eye, so we're going to talk about those real quick. Mike, Michael Strickland, uh, Coffey, he was 6 for 10 from the plate, also had a big three-run homer in the seventh this past week. Um, he was a standout performer from this past week. Then you had Reed Gannis of Thomas County Central. Four in his pitch, he had eight strikeouts and only one hit. He had a top performance this week. Kevin Jenkins from Pickens. Uh, he went seven for eight from the plate. He had a double and six BBs as well. Carter Stewart of Coffee County High School, five and nine from the plate, batted .556 this past week. Then you have Mark Bello Jr. of St. Francis, 6.1 innings pitch, five strikeouts, um, and only one run. Then you had Kate Brown. We talked about what he was able to do. He made another list this past week. Uh, we just talked about his performance. Coy Argo of Commerce, he had seven innings pitch, six strikeouts, um, five hits, but zero runs. Another top performance from him. And then we talked about Makai Buckley. And then Will Hawkins of St. Francis was three for five, two doubles, two RBIs, five stolen bases as well. And then we have two more we're going to hit um, from here. Uh, we'll talk about uh, Le Leyland Ellis from Worth County High School. Seven in his pitch, seven strikeouts, only one hit. And the Andrew Hammock of Crawford County, four and nine from the plate, one triple, one double, two RBIs, two BBs. So those are some of the top performances from this week in baseball. Guys, I know is getting hot. I think it is what Craig. Two weeks left in the season. Two weeks left in the season for baseball, so um, it is rounding into form. And uh, Craig is actually going to have his rankings dropping here pretty soon, if they haven't already, uh, on ScoreATL.com. So get the latest rankings on there. We know Grayson has some big time matchups coming up if they want to make the postseason. And Parkview has been the standout all year long. But obviously, Lowndes is going to be a team to watch. Houston County, I know, has been pretty stellar in 6A so far this year. So stay tuned for that. Number nine, AJC actually announced officially their all-state basketball teams from this past year. You guys can go to AJCSports.com, get the, the full list. No surprise here, all classification player of the year, obviously Ace Bailey and what he was able to do. Class 7A was Jeffrey Pierce as the head coach. First team, Ace Bailey, Josh Dixon from Milton, Kikari Harris from Grayson, Josh Hill from Wheeler, and then Jacob Wilkins from Grayson. Uh, for that one, we'll only go through a couple because it's going to definitely be a lot. Uh, we'll go through two more, 6A and 5A. 6A, player of the year was Karis Bilal of Riverwood. They won the state title, obviously. Uh, not surprised there. Coach Buck Jenkins, who we had on the show, he was coach of the year. No surprise there as well. Had a phenomenal year. Um, but Riverwood, he also was named to first team. Uh, Karis Bilal was. Then you had a really outstanding player, Tyler Jordan for Shiloh. He was named to the first team. Uh, J.R. Leonard was also named first team. Braden Liu, no surprise there, was named first team. And then Joshua Park, or Josiah Parker from Lee County was also on that team. And the final one, 5A player of the year, C.J. Brown, coach of the year, Jermaine Sellers. Uh, and obviously, C.J. Brown made the first team, followed by Joa Chapel of Dutchtown, Josiah Lawson of Tucker, uh, Darion Deuce Lindsay of Mays, and then Ramon Soya of Chapel Hill. So the full list is on there. I just wanted to preview some of the top names that was on there that made this list. But you guys go on there. Um, go figure it or, or go check it out, I should say. Really great list. But on AJCSports.com, they officially came out with their all-state list from this past year. All right. So number 10 to kind of conclude the show. Um, as you guys all know, I think it's one of the best basketball weekends you could probably have in, in the college tournament. I mean, Swiss 16 is nothing like it. Um, also, you're going to have the Elite Eight two days after, but you guys know it kicks off tonight, followed by tomorrow. As I was telling Craig in the office today, I think tomorrow's the best day of the matchups. Um, you know, you got Tennessee Creighton, um, you got Houston Duke, um, and that's the one I'm looking forward to, actually. Speaking of Houston Duke, I think it's going to be intriguing. Um, I think it's one of the best Sweet Team matchups that we got. Obviously, you know, another intriguing one will be Marquette and NC State, but the, the biggest question is can Duke? Take the fight to Houston. Houston is a very big physical team, one of the best defensive teams in college basketball. They obviously got great scores. Emmanuel Sharp went off in their game against um, Texas A&M, right, when they went on that 12-2 run to kind of come back and win. Um, you know, but they got scores. You got LJ Cryer. He went off for 20 in that game. You also got Jabal, Jamal Sheed as well. So they got some players that can hoop and play really, really good. But what stood out in that game against James Madison for, for Duke is that they 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 went when they went at him and their best player didn't even play his best right Kyle F F Kyle Fapowski did not play his best it was Tyrese Proctor 
it was it was it was Jerry McCain um, and Jeremy Roach. That that's the that's the key three for me. Those three right there, if they can have a big time performance, and if they can get going and pack the punch, take it to Houston. This could be one of the best Sweet Sixteen matchups we had in a little bit. I re- I really think so. So in- intriguing to see what Josh Shire has kind of schemed up and how he decides to attack that Houston defense. And as you guys all know, even if you're up 10 points with two minutes to go, you got to be able to close the deal. Because as you've seen in a game prior for Houston, they came back against Texas A&M with less than two, three minutes on a 12-2 run, got back in the game, and ended up winning it um, and advancing to this round. So that's the top matchup for me, Houston-Duke. Check it out on tomorrow night. Uh, I think it's at 9 p.m., I believe. Go check it out. But that's all I got for today. Thank you guys for tuning in. Keeping it real with Najee Wilkins. Happy Friday Eve, and uh, we will see you guys soon. Pray who you got tomorrow. Perry Hague. Oh, you got a good one. Uh, Coach got Perry's head coach tomorrow, so you got to check out that episode. They got a great program, just won it all this year, and they're going to be an intriguing team to watch. That's all I got. See you guys soon. Peace.